for the claim. Even the most recent hysteria, take the case some of you may be familiar with because you're university students, take the case of Columbia University. For the past year and a half, there's been this huge hysteria whipped up at Columbia that it's rife with, rampant with, anti-Semitism. And uh, the committee that was appointed came under a great deal of pressure to convict those professors who were alleged to be the leaders of this anti-Semitic cabal at Columbia. The report comes out last two weeks ago. What does the report find? They could find exactly one case in one class, in one lecture, where a professor, they claim, answered a question. It was during the siege of Jenin, where an Israeli student attempted to defend the Israeli actions in Jenin. A Palestinian professor responded, they said, heatedly to the question. That was it. That was it. The whole hysteria came down when you looked at the evidence to one incident in one class during the siege in Jenin when a Palestinian professor responded heatedly to a student's remark. It also concluded that uh, there was no evidence whatsoever of anti-Semitism among any of the faculty at Columbia. Now, it's a revealing case because you're hearing over and over again about a resurgence of anti-Semitism on college campuses. Every case which I was able to investigate turned out to be a fraud. And here, in the case of Columbia, where the most intensive investigation was launched, where a large number of politicians were calling for faculty to be fired, where the president of Columbia was completely unsympathetic to the professors who came under attack. Nonetheless, they couldn't find evidence of anything except a heated response in one class. That's it. The whole claim of a new anti-Semitism is a complete fraud from beginning to end. I want to look at one last topic, namely, in many, <coughs> to my mind, in many ways, the most dispiriting aspect of, the, of my remarks <coughs> this evening, namely that uh, one of the reasons there's so much controversy, dispute, and passionate dissent on the Israel-Palestine conflict, and perhaps I think the main reason, is because of the vast amount, the uncontrollable proliferation of sheer fraud on the Israel-Palestine conflict, which contaminates the debate on the topic. I began my remarks uh, by talking about the Joan Peters affair. And now I end my remarks by talking about a comparable case, which not, is not, uh, it's not an isolated case, it's an indicative case of what happens or what goes on in the United States on this topic. Before doing so, before getting to that case, I just want to make a couple of preliminary remarks. In academic life, we have mechanisms of, so to speak, quality control. Mechanisms which give us a reasonable sense of how much trust to invest in the findings of a scholar or an academic. Now, 